Line charts are a great way to see trends, but sometimes you want to see two lines next to each other to see how they compare like this year and previous year. But sometimes it's hard to see the variance, so it's a good thing to be able to actually be able to put in either lines to show how much difference there is between each point or even shading the area. And this is all possible using error bars. So you can have not only lines and shading and also color code depending on if one is higher or lower in each particular point, like with lines here and shading here. So let's jump over to my Power BI desktop and I'll show you how I did them. So if you want to follow along, I have the data set and also the M code for the dim date table in the description below. And as you can see, I have all different variations of the line chart shown here and the different ways these can be created. So not only do you have your normal line chart, you got smoothed and then also you got stepped as well. And with the four different variations, you can see where you just have the line that is just one particular color and also the shading with one particular color. And then we have where if the previous year is higher than the current year, then that is going to show red and then vice versa, it's going to show green. And that's with a line and then also with shading as well. So if we use these as a reference, all you need to do to create these is to then click on the line chart down here. And all we need to do is just add two measures that you can create in the fact sales table. One is total sales, which is going to be this year because I filtered it by 2017. And then all we need to do is just click on here and drop that in because all that is, is a sum of the sales amount in the fact sales table. And then for the previous year, all I'm doing is taking that total sales amount, putting it within a calculate and doing same period last year and pointing it to the dim date table date column. So if I drop that in now as well, we now have our two points. Now, if I just change total sales to TY for this year and total sales last year to PY for previous year. Now we have those two in. What we need to do is just drag in our month short, which is down here and put that on the X axis. And now we have it there. If you drop in your month short and it's showing up in alphabetical order, all you need to do is click on the month short, go to sort by column under column tools and then filter by month. This will then make it go December to January. And then all you need to do is just click on your graph, go to sort axis, select what you're sorting by and then do ascending. And then that will fix the issue with it being in alphabetical order. So now we have our graphs here. What we want to do is now move over to the little magnifying glass under the visualization pane here. And then down here, you see error bars. And then this is where you can now add in an error bar that will give you this look with the line. And this is done by enabling down here the options. And then we're keeping bar. We want to move the tool tip because otherwise it will keep showing up with everything. So we just want to just remove that just to make it a lot more better when we're just hovering over. So we only see the amounts for this year and last year. And then for the upper bound and lower bound, this is basically going, this is where this is the upper and this is the lower. And all you have to do is go back to your two measures. So your total sales, if you drop in upper bound with total sales and then last year, total sales into lower bound, you suddenly have these two lines down here. If we go to the bar, we can choose to match the series and it's decided to use this year as the series color, but we're not going to, we're just going to go here and then make it a light gray. And then here you can play around with the actual thing. So if I just make this a bit bigger, you can see what's going on. So under here, you can see these little lines. This is all under the marker shape. So if we make that none, it now disappears. And then if you want the lines to be a bit thicker, you can do width like this. As you can see, it gets a lot thicker and then you can make it back down. So there you go. So I'm just going to make it that thickness for now. And I'm just going to make it a bit fainter as well. So it looks like that. And then what we want to be able to do is just remove the legend. And then we want to remove the grid lines. And then we want to add in a series label. So we have this information like this. So that's how you get the bits at the end. So now we can see it all matches up and it's just a larger version of it. And then to simply change these lines into just shading like we've got here, what we do is just take a copy for now, drop that in. If we go back to our error bars and then instead of bar, we want to do error band. So if we click on that and then click off bars, you now have this shading area, which is being done by the series color again. So if we switch that off, then we can go light gray. And now we have a very, very light gray, but that's because because the transparency is quite high. So let's move this down to 50%. And now we've got our shading. And it's as simple as that, just to be able to get that variance where if you want it shaded or with an actual line. But if you wanna know when it's higher or lower, 
and actually give you a different color depending on if it is higher or lower, then we just need to create another measure, which is basically going, what's the min? And then we're going to use this in our upper and lower band, but in more than just this year. And all you have to do is just within min, put in your total sales, then a comma, and then your last year total sales. And then what that will do, that will tell you which one's the minimum. Then if we come back to our line for now, and in here, you see we've got our upper bound under the error bars and this year, and we got previous year as well. But if I do previous year, we don't have anything. So first thing I wanna do is just go back to this year and just remove total sales like this. And then for this year, I wanna drop in that measure that I just said about that has the min in it. And then I'm just putting that in the upper bound. I now want to go into previous year. I want to enable it and then instead of dropping that measure into the upper bound I want to drop it into the lower bound and now we have a different one there so if you notice there wasn't anything there because all it's done is look for the upper bound of where this year is greater than previous year but anything where the previous year is greater than this year is not showing but that's where dropping this into the lower bound makes these pop up and then all we have to do then is go to our bar just do our formatting so let's just make that none and then make the width two and now now, because this is going to be the lower one, so that means last year, the previous year is higher than this year, we want that to be red. So let's make that that color red. And then if we go back to our this year under the series apply to, and if we come back down to our bar where the gray is, we now just want to change that to a green. And now we have our colors that do that. And it works exactly the same way with this here. So if we go back and for this year, let's just remove both of those. Then we drop in the upper bound, our measure with the min in it, so that one. And now you can see, again, it shaded it to the point of where everything is above the previous year. And then if we come down to our error band, you see the band color and we make that green. And then we go back up come to our previous year, enable, drop that into the lower bound again, remove the bar, add the error band, turn off the series color, make this 50% and then make this red. And there you go. You now have your higher or lower than the previous year shading area on your line charts. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give a like and subscribe. And if you want to carry on learning some Power BI tricks and tips, check out these videos over here where I show you how. And as always, until next time.